Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now we are going to get right back into the great African American women. We are now on Maria Louise Baldwin. She's the first black woman principal in Massachusetts. The time period is 1856 to 1922. And so, without further ado, it reads as such. Now, for 40 years, Maria Molly Louise Baldwin served as principal of the well-known predominantly White Agassiz Grammar School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. She was one of the very few African Americans to head such a northern school at the time. And she was the first black woman school principal in the state. Conscious of her position as a pioneer representative of her race, she once said, I dare not fail. Maria Louise Baldwin was born in Cambridge on September 13th, 1856, the eldest of two daughters and a son of Peter L. Baldwin and Mary E. Baldwin. Her father was for many years a postal worker in Boston, while her mother hailed from Baltimore. Baldwin attended Cambridge Primary, Grammar, and high schools, and in 1875, she graduated from the Cambridge Training School for Teachers, career at Agassiz. She began her teaching career in Chestertown, Maryland, where she remained for two years. In 1881, Baldwin became a primary grade teacher at the Agassiz Grammar School, named for the scientist Lewis Agassiz and located near the campus of Harvard University. After teaching all grades from the first to the seventh, she became principal of the school in 1889. In 1916, the school building was torn down and replaced by one that Baldwin helped to plan. Higher grades were added, her title changed. from principal to master. And she took charge of 12 teachers and 500 students. In her later years, she also taught summer classes for teachers at Hampton Institute in Virginia and at the Institute for Colored Youth in Shaney, Pennsylvania. Baldwin treated her students and teachers with gentleness courtesy, maintaining order not by using discipline, but by earning love and respect. According to a 1922 biography published in the AME Church Review, she was noted for being harmonious in every detail of her personality and her work. In the frictionless running of her perfect school machine, community activist. Baldwin participated in the community works of various organizations, including the Boston Ethical Society, the League of Women for Community Service, the Teachers Association, and the 20th Century Club. Through her activities, she met and corresponded with many of the most respected people of her time, such as Charles W. Eliot, Edward Everett 
Hale, Julia Ward Howe, and Alice Freeman Palmer. Baldwin also associated with prominent African Americans and performed functions specifically aimed at the black community. She met black Bostonians through her work with the Banneker Club, the Woman's Era Club, which she had helped to found. And the Omar Club, where she became acquainted with William Monroe Trotter, a dedicated reader and book collector. She invited Black Harvard students to her home for weekly reading classes. Baldwin lectured in many areas of the United States and developed a reputation for her skill with English and the art of public speaking. She lectured on the lives and works of such figures as Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and George Washington, and on such topics as history, poetry, and woman suffrage. In 1897, she gave the Washington Birthday Memorial Address at the Brooklyn Institute of Arts and Sciences, speaking on the life and works of Harriet Beecher Stowe. The first black woman to be so honored by the Institute. Despite her acceptance by such, by, excuse me, by much of Boston society, Baldwin knew that some Bostonians harbored prejudice against blacks. When the film, The Birth of a Nation, in 1915, which presents an insulting picture of her race, was screened in Boston. She was asked to read some poems at the showing and then to join in singing My Country, Tis of Thee. Please do not sing that then, she requested. For it would break my heart when I know of the feeling of so many in Boston and throughout the country who do not recognize truly the fact that this is our country. I might sing it another time, but not now. Baldwin collapsed and died of heart disease on January 9th, 1922. While addressing the council of Robert Gould Shaw House Association at a hotel in Boston, the entire nation mourned her loss. Honors. Many more honors were bestowed on Baldwin after her death. The Agassiz class of 1922 presented the school with a tablet in her memory. The school also established a scholarship in her honor and renamed its auditorium Baldwin Hall. Howard University in Washington, D.C. named a woman's dormitory Maria Baldwin Hall and the League of Women for Community Service created the Maria L. Baldwin Memorial Library. At her death, many tributes poured in from admiring colleagues, students, and friends. One printed in a Cambridge newspaper spoke for many. Children and adults have learned from contact with Miss Baldwin a new respect and appreciation for the Negro race 
whose noble possibilities her whole life exemplified. She was left to all whose lives touched hers. The memory of a rare and radiant nature. The keynote of whose character was service. And that does complete Maria Louise Baldwin. So I want you and your family to be blessed and have a wonderful rest of the evening. And stay tuned to Poem Praise 2 for our next great African-American woman, which is going to be Janie Porter Barrett. So until next time, I want you to be well, be well, be blessed, and I will talk with you soon. Here on Poem Praise 2. So until next time, later y'all.